Hey friends, it's Carol Saltbox Stitcher. I'm back for another video. And this is episode number... Okay. There's, this, there's a lot of props here. This, this episode's all about finishes that need to be framed. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's not all about that, but that's part of it. <laughs> Sit back. There's a frame for you. Okay. Does that help? Oh yeah, lots. <laughs> so I know you've got a lot of them. Well, there's 40 sitting there, but. So that one frame's probably not gonna help. True. Much. So here's my contribution to more framing. <laughs> and Guess what episode it is? CN 100. I don't think Monopoly money is going to buy much, but <laughs> we'll see. How are you? It's hot. It's Florida. It's August. It's humid. Stay inside and stitch. So my husband and I, he says, turn the air conditioner up, which means colder. And I say, turn it down, which means colder. <laughs> so we go through that debate every year. Anyway. Um, hope you all are doing well. I wanted to show you what I've been stitching and then I'm going to take a short break and then I'm going to start showing you some of my finish not framed, which is really sad because I really do want them framed. Some people say, are you a pro or ask if you're a process or a product stitcher process, meaning you only like the process or you primarily like the process. Product means you like you like stitching, but you mainly want to have those items on your walls. Well, that's kind of where I am, but yeah, framing on a pauper's budget is not always easy. So if you're independently wealthy and you're a framer, give me a call. We need to talk. <laughs> okay, what have I been stitching? Well, first of all, um, I went to a three-day retreat last week in Jacksonville. It was, it's put on by Anna Williamson, and she, it's the Sunshine State Stitchers, and there were people, some were not from Florida, but the majority of people were from Florida. I got together with old friends and new friends, and it was just wonderful. So, prior to that, I, the last week of July, I've been working pretty consistently on Ann Ufendel. This is by Hands Across the Sea. This came out years ago. And this is the booklet that has Isabella on the other side, which I'd also love to stitch. So Anne Ufendel, I worked on her quite a bit, quite a bit. And I am all the way across on that top. I just need to do the over one and there's a few um, there's some over one flowers and there's some, um, let's see, what else is there? There's a star, like these flower are over one. And then there's another one of these stars, but the main parts of it I have finished. I'm stitching in on 40 count pecan butter by Lakeside. I've gone all the way around with the border, but I'm concentrating on this. And I'm not going to go any further until I have those over one. I'm not going to save all that for the, till the end. I do need to come down on the side with the flowers. So that's Anne Ufendel by Hands Across the Sea. The next thing I've been working on was my, I worked on this one of the days at the retreat. This is my peaceful paradise. I have had people say they can't find this, so I'm sorry. I thought the attic might have it. That's where I got it originally. And I took this with me in order to fill in behind the sun and the moon. And I got a lot of 
behind the sun finished, but not behind the moon. So that's where I am on that. So that made for some nice fill in at the retreat, that blue behind the sunshine. So I worked on that. And then I had a new, two new starts. The first one that I started the first week in um, August, I'm gonna do eight new starts through August and September. And this is Elizabeth Furness by Hands Across the Sea. There are quite a few people stitching this. They're a lot further along. They started about a year ago for Yvette Gonzalez's birthday. I think there's um, Christy Crosshatch Quilts, Olivia Pumpkin Hollow Quilts, and Becky Socks for Mom. They're all working on this. And like I said, they're way further along. So I just started it. I'm stitching it with the Verisoa Silks. And this is a piece of XJU design that I actually got in a monthly subscription, uh, fabric subscription in 2021. It was a six month and I got fat halves. So it didn't really have a name other than April. And this is where I am on this one. So I've gone all the way around with the border. Now, if you can see really closely, you can see it a little bit down here. There's a red inner border that goes all the way around. It's covered up by the frame. And I just, it's charted. You can see it's charted with a red border. So I decided I'm gonna do it, because I like it. I did have to wait, I didn't have that color. But I got the color, that was about the only thing I got in the mail. And I started on a few of the flowers. So on the bottom, the green border ends and then the red border and then you start on all that grass. But the colors are gorgeous. And if you wanna see it further along, go watch um, Christy Crosshatch Quilts or Olivia Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. They're working on it. It's gorgeous. So I'm anxious to get back and do more of that. Whenever. My next new start is Mary Carr by Needlework Press. I love this chart. This is another one that Christy from Crosshatch Quilts is working on. And um, she is actually using the overdyed cottons. This has, you can use overdyed cottons, DMC or Averisois 103. I got the 103. I started stitching it on a piece of 40 count and I just wasn't happy with the coverage. So, um, here's the 103s. So instead I found a piece of 46 count and actually it's the called for and it's, I'm able to get it on a fat quarter. So I have barely a start on this one. This is Flannel Flowers by Fox and Rabbit, 46 count. And it's gonna be a narrow margin. It's just about exactly two inches, but that's okay. It's kind of a creamy, no, it's not creamy. It's an off-white with gray tones. So I'm pretty happy because I think it's really close to the color of the chart. So those are the things I've been stitching on. And then I'm going to start. So this is my new start for the second week of August, Mary Carr. And I'm going to start another one next week for the third week. Not sure what yet. What yet? I'm not sure which one I'll start. So that is Mary Carr by Needlework Press. And then I just thought I'd show you a few 
fall ones. I was looking through some of my fall pieces and I thought I would show you a few things that are kind of on my radar. Um, these will be things that maybe I might start or continue in October or work on them like during the afternoon. Just because I start new ones for the, um, this is part of Narissa Stitching Lifestyle. I talked about this on my last video, 99. So if you're curious, go back and watch that one. But I'm doing eight sampler starts and it's um, hashtag sampler stitching starts. So that's what that has to do with. So anyway, I don't have to do that for the whole week just so I get them started. And so I, I hopefully will have some more time to do some of uh, some fall pieces. And then Sampler September, I really wanna, there's a couple other ones that I wanna work on too, in addition to my new starts. Does that make sense? Yeah, clear as mud. Here's a fall one and um, my friend Lisa, Linda was stitching on this at the retreat. This is Blackbird Fractor by Plum Street. I love this chart. I have not started it. It actually calls for Patriot's Brew, which is a little, a little more brown. But hers, um, she was stitching on, looked like sheep straw, kind of this golden color. And I loved it. It just looks so good on that color. And I'm pretty sure it's close to this. I didn't take mine. I should have. That was the nice thing about staying at home. You know, somebody would say, oh, are you working on such and such? Yes, I'll bring it tomorrow. <laughs> so I stayed at home. It's about 20, between 20 and 25 minutes because it was at the beach. There were 50 ladies and it was three days. You could start stitching as early as eight o'clock and then go till 10 o'clock at night. Lunch, a wonderful lunch was provided and then everybody kind of went wherever for dinner. So this is what I'm gonna be doing, Blackbird Fractor by Plum Street. So I really wanna get a start on that. She has hers almost finished and it's fabulous. Blackbird Fractor. So it'll be more golden than that. I've had people ask about um, what is the pounding sound? Well, this is an antique table, dining room table. The microphone's right here, so anytime I even touch the table, I'm not pounding. <laughs> anytime I even touch the table, it makes a sound. So. Sorry about that, but there's not a lot I can do to avoid that. The next one that I really want to start, and um, um, Olivia from Pumpkin Hollow Quilts, Katie from So Tattered, they're all starting this, and that is Jack's Bash by Plum Street. I love it. It's very similar to her patriotic, am I showing that right? Yeah. Her patriotic, Paulette's patriotic pieces kind of in that same style. Jack's Bash. There's no way I would probably finish this this year, but I would definitely like to at least get it started. And for that, I have a piece of Abbas, 35 count Abbasidarian by R&R &R and all the called for fall colors. I think because it's so hot, it's just really fun to think about fall. Even even though technically we don't have a fall till January, but it does start to cool off a little bit, hopefully. So that is Jack's Bash, and I have this cute floss drop that a friend of mine made for me. It's cute. So I'm using the called for on that.
The next one that I want to work on, this should go quickly. Hold on, there's a counting pin in here that I need to. This is a witch in her garden. And this is by um, Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread. Here's what the whole piece looks like. I love this. And I have all of the stuff. I have the floss. I ordered it as a kit. I think I got this from Farm Girl Dry Goods. It's supposed to be on Country Mocha. I'll probably do it on that. It's not my favorite, but for a drum, I can, I can handle it. A Witch in Her Garden by With Thy Needle and Thread. And with it, she sent some pumpkin and acorn waxers. I got this last year. She has not, I don't think she has this offered. She makes a certain number of kits, and then when they're gone, that's it. I don't have these on a ring yet, but I need to. I may start this really soon for like my afternoon stitch. There's all the colors. And then with it, I also have the pumpkin stem, the little candle holder, and the velvet. The whole shebang. To do it. There's also a little piece of linen in here, so I don't know if there's an extra piece like a strawberry or, or an acorn or something. I have to look and see. Because there's another piece of linen in with the accoutrements. So that is a witch in her garden. The next one, which is actually a whip, I started this last year. And I'd like to get back to this one. And this is definitely couldn't go on to autumn. This is um, Olga's Autumn Stocking by Plum Street. And this one I have a piece of Pearl Barley by Lakeside. And I just have a little start. So the stocking will come down and over. Olga's Autumn Stocking by Plum Street. And on Lakeside, Pearl Barley. Which I think could be the called for. Yes, vintage Pearl Barley. It calls for 36. Well, that's what I have, 36. Amazing. How that happens sometimes. So that is Olga's stocking. Oh, my nose itches. And these are the colors for that. I could almost put those on the same ring because they're very close in color. And another cute, um, floss ring that my friend made me. It's like a funky lady in front of... She kind of looks like a Salem lady in front of music. So that is another one that I have started. And that one fell on the floor. A couple more that I want to work on that are fall. I have a lot of other fall. And I have other fall whips. But I haven't gotten those out yet. I have a friend in our stitching group. That was another nice thing. Almost our entire, well, I think our entire stitching group went to this retreat. So it was just super fun because those are people I get together with once a month. And then they were all at the retreat. This is Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain. And this is by um, Carriage House Samplings. Or is this Kathy Derrick? 
This is Kathy Barrick. And this one came out in 2015, so it's not new. And I have it kitted with the NPIs that it calls for, the silks. And this is on a piece of 40 count thrift store britches by Kitten Stitcher. This is one of her hand dyed linens. My friend did it on hog bristle, so I'm not sure if this is what I'm gonna work on, but I love the modeling on this. Keep in mind when Teresa Kitten Stitchers, I think her sons do all the dyeing now. You can't buy a color and then have it be exactly the same next time, with maybe a few exceptions, but for the most part, they vary, which is the wabi-sabi of them all. <laughs> that's her word, not mine, wabi-sabi. So that's Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain by Kathy Barrick. I love this piece. It's a big one, but I would like to at least get it started this year. Another carriage house, and this is one that I, I think I put in my finished knot frame. I did Frederick last year, and I'd like to do Frederica this year. To me, that's very fall. And I'm doing it on the same, which is a pearl barley. So I have this pre-cut piece with the same colors as I did Frederick, so the NPIs. And then I have one other fall to show you. And then I'm going to take a short break and then I'll start on my finish not framed. These are the colors. And this is another, oh, nope, this is, this is Olga stocking. Never mind. <laughs> I'm trying to put the ones that are whipped separate so he can put the little label at the bottom versus the ones, which a lot of people have commented they really like his inserting. I guess he's officially an editor now. <laughs> so he does all the editing. Are you going to raise? Yeah. That and $100 Monopoly money, he'll buy you a cup of coffee. Okay, then I have one more whip. I kind of forgot that I had started this last year, but I did. And this is uh, Hilda Boo and Sunflowers 2 by With Thy Needle and Thread. This is adorable. Whoops. So cute. And now this is on a cool thread drop. It's like a witch's hat. Somebody gave me that as a gift. And these are all the colors. And these colors actually are also for this piece, which is Witch's Brew. Also by With Thy Needle and Thread. And I have a start on this. Whoops. I also have a needle in there. Okay, people, come on. Small start. And this is 40 count 18th century Blackbird by R&R. &R. That's a trailing thread, sorry about that. So what I started is this little bit at the bottom. And like I said, these are the colors for both this one and the Witch's Brew. So those are some things that I want to get finished and started this year. Okay, I'm going to take a short break and reheat my coffee in the microwave, which I don't like to do, but it's gotten cold. I already had my coffee. That's why he didn't bring it to me. 
I'm sure he would have. So I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, I'm gonna try to keep track of how much time it, it, it goes by so that um, if it gets to be too long, I may stop and show you some of the rest of them next week or next time I video. We'll see. Um, some of these you've recently seen, so I'm gonna go very quickly. Again, these are finished, not framed. Some are samplers, some are not. <laughs> this one is flag flock. I'm not gonna take them all out of the plastic. Flag flock by Plum Street. This one I just finished last month. This one is, and I, I need to get this one done soon because this is fall. Not Forgotten Farm, Reverend Gordon Squashbottom. And he has a, a companion that's a female that I need to do. Aww. Not Forgotten Farm, Reverend Gordon Squashbottom. That's so cute. It is cute. I can use that Monopoly money to get it framed. This is by the Scarlet House. This is Ann Topley. I'm not going to go over what threads and linen I used. Um, if there's one you're real curious about, let me know. This called for double dyed black forest by Lakeside, but I don't think that's what it is. Ann Topley by the Scarlet House. It's kind of hard to see close, far away. This one is C.C. Smith. A lot of people were saying it was Keisha Smith, but I have a nephew that's married to a gal from Denmark. And supposedly this is a Danish, well, it's a Dutch sampler. She called it C.C., so I don't know. And that's by the Scarlet House. They're all beautiful. Or are you talking about me, dear? No. Oh. Yeah, you need to be free, too. Yeah. In infamy. I hang you on the wall. This is the little red samp the little red chair sampler by the Scarlet House. I was talking to uh, my friend at um, the retreat. She said she did this on 56 count, and it's adorable because it's so tiny. I did on 40. Little red chair sampler by Scarlet House. Some of these smaller ones, I'm gonna try to just lay some myself and just either have my husband build a frame or order a frame. This is a really small one, but I do wanna have this framed. This is just called Samplers by the Scarlet House. Okay, let's see what the time is. This is Frederick that I was just talking about. I want to do Frederica. So this is Frederick by Carriage House. I need to do his mate, Frederica. I have a lot of... Um, smalls that need to be finished too but I'm not including them in this finished not framed pile this one I need to take out because there's a lot of plastic here this is Charlotte Clayton this is by the uh, it's a museum in Washington 
the commanding officer's quarters heritage museum at Fort Walden, Fort Warden State Park, Charlotte Clayton. This is the one that has the big cats. A lot of confetti stitching on the flowers at the top. Charlotte Clayton. The bunnies, the cats. Oh, by the way, this is, this is a lot of people ask. This is on Redware Road by the Scarlet House. I did that one years ago. The next one is Sarah Casey Unwin by Chessie and Me. I don't know if this is biblically a sin, but I, it's a sin to have all these finished, not framed. Chessie and Me, uh, Sarah Casey Unwin. This is Elizabeth Watt. Uh, when I went to the attic in 2019, I saw this on the wall. I loved it, so I made this my, let's see, 2021, I think. 2020, no, 2021. This was my January uh, monogamous stitch. Every January, I try to do one stitch, one sampler monogamously for the month of January. It's a good way to start the new year, I think. This one did run into, a, I think, the first week in February, but I basically stitched it in about five weeks. Elizabeth Watt, 1816, my Milady's Needle. This one is Snooty Parrots. This is the one that I did in January last year, 2022. That other one must have been 2020. Elizabeth Watt must have been 2020. This is 20, and then 2021 I did the Sampler Company Red House Sampler, and then 2022 I did this one, Snooty Parrots. And then this year I did a, um, it's in here somewhere too. So this was like 2022. And this is Barbara Anna, the Snooty Parrot Sampler. It's kind of long and narrow. I love the parrots. This is Jane Bannister. This is by Victorian Rose Needle Arts, which actually is about an hour away from here in Gainesville, Florida. Ruth Bannister, no, sorry, Jane Baxter. Had that one wrong. Jane Baxter by Victorian Rose. Sorry about that, Jane Baxter. This, I use the Country Sampler Conversion, which is quite a bit different from the called for. Jane Baxter. By Victorian Rose Needle Arts. I love the shape of this one. There's a lot of stitching in that border. Jane Baxter. This one is Miss Manners. And this is by um, GGR, Miss Manners. I love Adam and Eve samplers. Miss Manners. I don't know. Oh, Elizabeth Manners, so it's called Miss Manners. This is Mary Good by Sassafras Samplers, which is um, 
Sassy Jacks, Kimberly Young, Mary Good, 1827. This is some of the Pepto people because they look like Pepto Bismol. <laughs> Mary Good. So if there's any that you think for sure I need to hurry and frame or that you would pick as like your top couple of the frame, let me know. This is Margaret Felicia Dyson by Fox and Rabbit. I did this one this past January as my monogamous stitch. Margaret Felicia Dyson. It's very colorful. What's the time? 10 minutes, okay. This one I did this year. This is Needle and Thread by With Thy Needle and Thread. This one is by Chessie and Me, Peace and Goodwill Sampler. I didn't do all the over one. I kind of modified it. Peace and Goodwill Sampler by Chessie and Me. Instead of all the over one, I just put Peace and then Goodwill. So this is a Christmas piece that I'd like to... This is another one I could probably lace it myself. just a matter of doing it. This is Samplers Not Forgotten, Kimberly Nugent. This is um, Christmas in My Heart. It says 1848, but this is not a reproduction. And this also, I got a thread conversion from the country sampler. love that big house. I love the border, too, coming out of those pots, those flowers. Or uh, the pot. I guess there's only one. <laughs> this one I did last year. This is Flag Folk. Again, this one's by Not Forgotten Farm, and it did have a... It called for DMC, and Country Sampler converted it to... I take that back. It called for weeks, and Country Sampler did a conversion to some other overdyed. Flag Folk by Not Forgotten Farm. Country Sampler originally did it on Murky, and I changed it and did it on Heroic by Picture This Plus. This is the Gather In, another one I want to have done framed this year. This is by Plum Street, the Gather In. This is done on, I know, Graham Cracker Linen by Kitten Stitcher. And I changed the over one. It did say, um, Calliope, the gentle steed over here and over one, and I changed it just to say the gather in. I didn't make that up. Somebody else had done that. This is Winter Rose Manor. A lot of people have finished this one. I finished it last year by with a needle and thread. I did mine on Winter Brew by R and R. There's another one that's something like the Light of Winter or something, and I'm hoping that one comes out soon. I'd like to stitch it. 
This one I did so many years ago, I don't even know when. I want to say at least 10 years ago. This is the Needlework Needleworker Sampler by With Thy Needle and Thread. I know this was one of the first pieces I did on 40 count. Because I was shocked how much smaller it was when you do on 40 versus like 32. It says all my scattering moments are spent. All my scattering moments are taken up with my needle. Needleworker sampler. I with my needle and thread. The next one is Sarah Fletcher by Hands Across the Sea. And this one I think I did on Thornfield by Needle and Flax Linen. Sarah Fletcher. This is Plum Street, A Thousand Hills. I finished this one this year by Plum Street, A Thousand Hills. Some people call these like the under the bed box or the um, drawer of no return. <laughs> This is a Mind Independent and Free, and this is by Carriage House. This is a long one. I have to show it in two parts. <laughs> well, let me do it this way. This is the top half. And this is the bottom half with the house. I love the alphabet that goes sideways down the center. Mind independent and free. This one is the ES Spot Sampler. At the time I did this, it was, this was almost impossible to find. It has since been re-released by 1884 Stitchery. I actually purchased this from somebody. ES Spot Sampler. It's originally by Of Female Worth, but it's been re-released, so you can get it now. ES Spot Sampler. Love the colors. This is Lucy Calcott, 1825. I think I finished this one last year. She's a big girl, she's beautiful. Lucy Calcott, I'd like to do the other one too. There's two Lucy Calcotts. One is 1825 and one is 1826. Or 1824, one of them, they're only like a year apart. Lucy Calcott, and this is by Just Stitching Along. Did I say that? And yes, it's supposed to have that blank space there. I mean, it's charted that way. It's not like I forgot something. This is Charlotte Frost. 1846 by the Scarlet House. This came out a couple years ago at um, in market. I think this was the 2020 market. Charlotte Frost. It's really pretty. A lot of grass, a lot of sheep, but very pretty. This one is the Scarlet House, Jane Cowie. This is pretty bright colors for Scarlet House. I was like, wow, but it's very pretty. Jane Cowie, a lot of over one in the verse.
This is Seven Sheep Sampler, but also by the Scarlet House. This is probably my number one favorite that I'd like to get framed soon. Seven Sheep Sampler. This is on Autumn, Autumn Gold, which is a double dyed linen by Lakeside. It's got a crazy border. This is Mary Lindsay by Chessie and Me. I love this style with just an alphabet and motifs. Mary Lindsay by Chessie and Me. This is Elizabeth Hunter by the Scarlet House. I think I saw um, Katie So Tattered. If you haven't watched her, you should. S-E-W So Tattered. She's a stitcher and a quilter. Elizabeth Hunter. I love this one. This I did on 46 count, I remember. Just love that style with the alphabet and then the motifs. Next to um, Adam and Eve, that's one of my favorites. This is the last one I'm going to show you today. I have more that are Blackbird, but I'm going to save that till next time. This is Jane Stanwick's. This is by Samplers Revisited. Again, alphabets. This one has a house, but I just love, I love this piece. And this one I got a um, conversion from the Country Sampler for this one. Jane Stanwick's. By Samplers Revisited. That's all I'm going to show you today. Like I said, I have probably, I don't know, eight or ten more that are Blackbird, but I'm going to wait on those. So um, I hope you all are doing well. I hope stitching is um, giving you great comfort <laughs> during this heat. I kind of think of it like um, people that live in like really northern areas that get a lot of snow and they kind of hunker down for the winter. That's kind of how it is here. We're hunkering down from the um, from the heat. Keep the air conditioner up or down, however you want to say that. <laughs> that was confusing when we first got married. It was like, well, turn the air conditioner up. What, you're cold? No, I'm hot. You mean turn it down? No. <laughs> uh, 40 years and counting. Someone said that he should have a name rather than Mr. Saltbox. So I said professor because he's about ready to start teaching again. Um, he hasn't taught since COVID because he teaches anatomy and it's just he loves the dissection hands on. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a little scary. So. Um, He's happy to be back in the classroom, I think. Are you happy? I'm happy. Well, good. <laughs> Happier than a human being should be allowed to have yeah. to be. That's all I have. It's going to take him forever if he decides to put the names on all of those. So I'm, I may have to um, do some post-it notes or something to help him out. So anyway. Yeah, breakfast. Thank you for watching. You already had breakfast. What are you talking about? Not today. Oh. Um, thank you for watching. I do really appreciate you subscribing. Um, we just hit a milestone of 20,000, which <laughs> who knew that this old lady would have 20,000 people subscribe to a video where I just ramble about cross stitch. This is no life. This is not like it's any kind of life improvement. <laughs> well, maybe, but anyway. So um, thank you again to those. I don't usually like to make a big deal about that, but um, I am very appreciative. And I certainly noticed that we went past 20,000, which is, like I said, crazy. 
So anyway, I hope you all are having a good day. I hope you're getting lots of time to stitch and that you can stay away from the heat and enjoy the rest of your summer. I will see you in a couple weeks. Love you. Bye.